According to the First Amendment, the government shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech it agrees with. No, that doesn't sound right. Let's try again. Government shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. There's no caveat there, and there's a reason for that. Of course, speech that is approved by those in power or by the loudest mob doesn't need legal protection. Its acceptance by the powerful is what protects it. It is speech that challenges the views of the elites or the mob that needs First Amendment protection. This was apparent on Saturday, August 1st, 2020, in Washington, D.C., where members of Students for Life of America and Black conservative advocacy group the Frederick Douglass Foundation wanted to paint Black Preborn Lives Matter on the street in front of Planned Parenthood, an organization that kills hundreds of thousands of unborn African-American children in the womb every year. In a city where the summer's violent unrest was still in full swing, and where even senators couldn't walk to their hotel without encountering threats of violence, a few pieces of chalk were all it took for two pro-life students to get arrested. Over the summer, city officials allowed protesters to utilize their freedom of speech to paint messages like defund the police on public streets. In fact, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser even commissioned a Black Lives Matter mural in permanent yellow paint on one public street a message that took up an entire city block. So citizens painting Black preborn lives matter should have been fine, right? Wrong. Even though the city granted a permit for the pro-life groups to demonstrate, it ignored their request to paint their own message on the sidewalk. So at six in the morning that Saturday, members from the two groups gathered in front of the Planned Parenthood with paint and sidewalk chalk. Washable, just in case. Several police officers were waiting, the officers informed the students that they would be arrested if they attempted to paint or even chalk on the public sidewalk or the road. Again, by this point in the summer, the D.C. police had allowed groups to paint defund the police on city streets, and the city had allocated taxpayer dollars to paint Black Lives Matter. So what's wrong with equal treatment for the message Black Preborn Lives Matter in front of a Planned Parenthood? The First Amendment, it seems, has fallen on hard times in our nation's capital. Want to paint a leftist message on public property? No problem. Want to chalk a pro-life message a few blocks away? Hope you know a good lawyer. Thankfully, the students did. They called on Alliance Defending Freedom, which has defended free speech for the past quarter century, won thousands of legal battles, and scored 11 victories at the U.S. Supreme Court since 2011. In one of those victories, NIFLA versus Becerra in 2018, The court ruled against a California law forcing pro-life pregnancy centers to advertise taxpayer-funded abortions. The law was a direct violation of the First Amendment's free speech guarantee, and the Supreme Court's decision was a major win for the free speech rights of every American. Writing for the majority, Justice Clarence Thomas said, The people lose when the government is the one deciding which ideas should prevail. He could just as easily have written that line about how Washington, D.C. discriminated against the pro-life views of Students for Life of America and the Frederick Douglass Foundation. The question is not about what type of speech the government should or should not decide to allow. The question is, why should we, or any other American, ever allow the government to make that decision at all? The Founding Fathers had that question in mind when they wrote the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And their answer was simple. We shouldn't. (laughs) 